Hello everyone and good afternoon. Thank you for being with us today and participating in the webinar organized by School Education Gateway, an initiative of European Union funded by Erasmus+. Plus. My name is Alexandra and I'm very happy to support this webinar together with my colleague Eleonora, who is backstage. Today's focus is discrimination and Carmen Pollack, together with Mateusz Stroyanski, will shed some light on the topic. Karen is a senior staff member at the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam. She is the international coordinator of the project Stories That Move Toolbox Against Discrimination. She was a member of the Dutch governmental delegation to the International Holocaust Remembrance Association and has worked extensively in publishing and education. Mateusz Trojanski is the Polish coordinator of the project Stories That Move and the Anne Frank Youth Network. He is a member of the Polish German Center in Krakow, coordinator of the traveling exhibition, author of educational workshops for youth and training educators, expert in international student and teacher exchange, and a professional in digital learning solutions. Together with Karen, they are the creators and moderators of the course discussing diversity and discrimination using the online tool Stories That Move. The webinar will be recorded and it will be available in the webinar page as of tomorrow. From now on, if you have any questions, you're very welcome to post them in the, in the chat and we will have a Q&A session in the end to address them all. Karen, Mateus, if you're ready, I'm more than happy to give you the floor. Okay, thank you very much, Alexandra, for this uh, introduction. And um, before I uh, pull up my own PowerPoint, to share with you. I want to thank School Education Gateway for making all of this possible, both the course and the webinar. Uh, it's really been a grand opportunity for Matthäus and me and uh, the Anne Frank House and all our partners in Stories That Move to reach out to a large new audience uh, yeah, through School Education Gateway. So we're excited this week to see all this engagement uh, through a for us, quite new uh, adventure. Now, let me share my screen and tell you what we aim to do in the next uh, next hour. Um, let's put it for full screen. This we have already covered. Um, so I'm going to go straight to one other little point to mention, and that is that um, Stories That Move involves a lot of partners across Europe. I won't read them all out, but I just did want to acknowledge that this project that is supported by uh, Erasmus program and by the German fund EVZ um, has partners in seven countries and um, as you've probably already noticed is also available in seven languages with Spanish coming up in the coming year as the eighth language. It's kind of important for me to acknowledge all these different partners because it shows the diversity of backgrounds of people who have helped develop the tool and who have worked together in the last two years to develop ways of making it um, available to teachers, spreading the word, but also engaging with teachers to find out how does it fit into the curriculum, how do they deal with all the different issues that you can face when you are using a new tool and discussing complex and sensitive topics that, as we have noticed this last year, are very relevant um, to the world we live in today. We have to say sadly, but that is the fact that uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, the news yesterday uh, that the murderer of um, uh, George Floyd has been uh, convicted, it, it, it's part of everyday uh, news and therefore relevant also for our students, for the young people we work with. So this was just a little kind of insight into the background of the project, but let's focus on what we will do today. And um, it's already been announced today, we are going to work on the core elements of stories that move facing discrimination. And this is the second learning path. And it looks in carefully at the terms, prejudice and discrimination, some of the challenges connected to these topics, but it also at the start, which you will see today as well, includes the voice of a young person, of Medina. So you will meet Medina 
And then we will see how this machinery, the picture that you see there, that was made by the young people uh, who you see in the picture, and their stories are also in Stories That Move, uh, you will see how we use this um, yeah, metaphor, I should say, of a machine, of who is in control of the machine, what is the effects of the machine, um, to un uncover the different layers, reveal the different layers of discrimination. And doing by seeing is an important part, I think, of any learning process. So we believe that is also the case for, uh, for educators, for us, for you. So the whole blended learning method that is integrated into Stories That Move, we will show by taking you into the tool and asking you to be very active participants today, adding your answers in chats. Um, yeah, we will ask you several questions in different ways and ask you very much to contribute. Uh, no worry about any answer being right or wrong or any spelling mistakes. That's not what it's about. That's what we say to our students. That's what I say now. Um, it's more about doing it all together and uncovering new aspects of this theme. Before I go a little um, deeper into the topic, I want to also mention how pleased I already am to see the discussion in the forum of the course. Um, yeah, we have really interesting contributions, so I hope you all will go there and, and, and reflect on what your colleagues have contributed. Um, also some personal stories, so I don't know whether Rokia uh, is with us today, whether he's able to attend, but he expressed already how one of the stories reflects the experience of his son. And I think always when we can share personal um, experiences and reflect on them, it has an empowering effect. It has a brings it more to the foreground what it means to be discriminated and why it's so important to respond to discrimination. Um, yeah, I will mention other examples from the forum just to show how uh, enriching I find it as a, as a trainer for stories that move to see your engagements through through the forum and indeed through Facebook. So um, one step back, which I always think is important to take, is why are we educating against discrimination? What is it we hope to achieve? And Although I just said that in the world today, discrimination is so obviously present and is so obviously part of our lives, there are a lot of young people who, uh, in fact a lot of people, but also our students, who, who maybe feel it doesn't affect them or they don't want to think about it. So I think one aspect of discrimination of such an important theme is to make people curious and we do this by bringing it close to them. So you see here portraits of four young people who are in the tool, but they're the same age of the students that we aim to reach through this project. Once people are a little curious, we can really truly engage them. We can try to create empathy, um, which again is what I think is very important in relation to these stories. Stories make it possible to, to feel empathy. And empathy and a deeper understanding, they go hand in hand, I think. Um, Stories the Move is not about learning definitions. I think actually teaching against discrimination is not about um, yeah, knowing exactly how to explain this or that. But of course it helps. It helps to have a deeper understanding. Um, and to feel you understand more is also empowering. And to hear other young people speak about their thoughts and to think along with these young people is also empowering. And ultimately, I think the aim of addressing discrimination in a school setting is to help young people realize that they can. They can stand up in different ways, different moments. They can stand up to discrimination and help change the world. 
So uh, this was just a brief introduction. Um, we're going to go into the first question we want to ask you, and we're going to use Slido. And before the I stop sharing and the Slido is shared, I'd like to introduce one of the visible thinking methods that we have in Stories That Move. Visible thinking, it's been introduced in the course. Um, visible thinking is a methodology that helps young people understand their own learning process. So it's also empowering. And one of the very simple routines that teachers can use and that we use today in the course and that we use in Stories That Move is at the beginning of a unit of, let's say, an hour webinar, you ask yourself, what do I know? What do I think? And after an hour, you reflect again on the same or similar question. So I won't uh, do too much talking because we want to get you engaged with uh, the tool. I'm going to ask uh, Matthias, who is co-hosting co with me, uh, to share the Slido. Um, and you will find it in the in the chat a link I'm just going to check it's uh, already there or is it being posted now yes so what you do is you click yeah maybe i hand over to you Matthias. yeah thank you so much karen and uh, welcome everyone um it's really nice uh, to be here with you i'm very glad i can be part of this uh, live event uh, during our um, course on the School Educa Education Gateway Platform. Uh, as Karen mentioned, I'm going to share the Slido where you will see one of the questions. The Slido is being posted now on the uh, chat and let's see the results. I think that discussing discrimination in my classroom is, that's the question we ask. And these are your answers. Necessary, important, challenging, very important. A strange topic for the school environment. Mm, that's very interesting. Underrated, essential. There are more answers coming in. Crucial, very important in order to gain a deeper understanding the machinery of discrimination in reference to our today's webinar. New interest topic, new and in interesting topic for my students. Mm -hmm. Essential, very useful. Thank you so much. Not acceptable. Imperative. I am guessing that the non-acceptable means that discrimination is not acceptable, ac uh, acceptable that the discussing um, is not being rejected, otherwise it would be not so logical to focus on this course. But um, Absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the, that's the intention here, but thank you for this comment, Karen. Full of pitfalls and difficulties. Mm -hmm. Important to save democracy. That's very interesting one. And novelty, inspiring. Thank you so much for all these questions. As you can see, we have a very interesting mosaic in, uh, in front of us with different answers to this particular question. I think that discussing discrimination in my classroom is. But you can see that challenging is the most typed answer as well as very important. Thank you so much for all these all these questions, all, all these answers. I see that uh, more is coming up, but um, but I think that we can stop now at this point and go to uh, another part. But I will tell you that we will get back to it later so that um, you know that we will also have a chance to share your thoughts later in the course of our um, today's meeting. Karen, would you like to add something? No, I, th I think, um, well, I think the very challenging um, is something we should recognize. It is, it's not an easy topic. Um, 
And that's actually, of course, the background to a lot of international organizations or educational organizations internationally wanting to work together to make something that is attractive for young people um, and also picks up the challenge, but in a way that is maybe helpful to smooth the way. It, it's still often, very often, extremely difficult. I saw one comment in um, um, in the forum, yes, it was in the forum, not on Facebook, in the forum that um, if you have young people in your classroom who are openly uh, anti-gay or anti-Jewish, this was the example that was given, then uh, you can be hesitant to even bring up the topic. Maybe during this course, at least I hope we will share some ideas on how you can tackle this situation, because we shouldn't ignore that this is the reality, not for everyone, but for many teachers. Yeah. Thank you so much, Karen. And this is indeed very important to acknowledge that um, this uh, process of discussing discrimination, let's say, let's say throughout uh, uh, your work as teachers in school is the, indeed challenging. But this is also a moment where we um, would like to uh, help you out in discussing these uh, difficult uh, topics in a classroom. And that's why we also um, give you a chance to get to know our tool a little bit better so that you can also see how can it help you in facilitating uh, this discussion this discussion in your in your classroom thank you so much for all the answers uh, to this question as i said we'll get back to it later um, i'm going to stop my stop sharing my screen now but uh, for a very little uh, moment because i'm going uh, to take you on a little journey um, two stories that move as a tool uh, we are going to uh, go through one of its learning paths uh, you already had a chance to look at how the online tool, our online tool stories that move looks like. But this time we will all together uh, go through its different parts uh, within this particular learning path. And we'll be also able to uh, interact a little bit uh, with each other through uh, the chat. So uh, I encourage you all to take uh, active participation in the next uh, uh, part of our webinar. Um, and let me take you on a little journey to our digital tool. I'm going to share uh, the screen once again, and this time you will see uh, the main website of Stories That Move. Being the main website of Stories That Move, uh, as you probably already noticed, some of you have already done it, so uh, you see these two uh, buttons, one uh, asks you to log in, the other to create an account. Both of them will redirect you to this where you can log in and enter the platform. If you're an educator, of course, you click this one, uh, and then if you have an account, and we expect that you have accounts at this point. Uh, please log in and uh, with your um, name and password. I'm gonna do it uh, now myself and you will follow what I see on my screen. You don't have to do it uh, uh, at this moment uh, yourselves. You can just follow what I'm sharing at this point. As you can see, I had a chance to work with the tool quite a lot. Some of these are only test, class, test classes, but some of these are an actual classes. And um, perhaps for you, this part is empty, but hopefully soon it will be full uh, of your classes, of your lessons that you are preparing based on stories that move. And very briefly, I will show you how does it look like from teacher's perspective, because that's something you couldn't uh, notice uh, at this point yet. If you have your class, you also can follow uh, your students and see step by step all their answers, as you can see. 
So this is something that hopefully you will be able to see also very soon, as soon as uh, you will uh, have your uh, students um, uh, working with the tool and being part of one of the classes that you've created. This is a very short uh, introduction to teachers dashboard, knowing that you all probably have accounts uh, at this point, but perhaps not yet with your classes and not yet with students, just so that you know that all the answers are visible for you from this perspective. And what we're going to do now, we're going to go to a demo version uh, that you can find in the right bottom corner of the teacher's dashboard that redirects us to an actual, actual uh, platform. And in this moment, you can see the platform in, from the student's perspective. So the same way your students, when going through different parts of uh, stories that move, are going to see um, um, this uh, online tool. Today, as uh, you know by the name of our today's meeting, we are going to uh, discuss the matter of uh, uh, facing discrimination. The name of our webinar is a machinery of discrimination. And this, what you just see now, what Karen already introduced at the very beginning of our meeting, is the machine of discrimination. So please have a look. Uh, it's very colorful, but it's also a little bit disturbing when we look at it. We see young people. These young people are also part of our project, so their stories you can find you now within our tool. But you can see that something is wrong with this machine, maybe or maybe not. We'll have a look at the different parts of this particular um, machine. Facing discrimination. What exactly is discrimination and how does it work? Who's involved and how does it affect people's life? OK, let's check. We have three different uh, models within this learning path. We are just going to try the first one. And let's start from the very first question. This is the moment when I would like you to answer on the chance. What do you know about discrimination? And maybe I add here that there is no right or wrong. What you know, what you think at this moment, everything is fine. And please contribute um, in the Q&A. I hope everyone can find it. It's um, a little bubble with a question mark in it. And I will share some of the answers that I get to see uh, with Matthäus. Um, Maybe I add here that in the classroom, students will usually add do this work on their own at this moment. They will be on their own, they will have their own uh, device and fill in their own um, answers. Of course, there are many situations, many situations where maybe students are working in pairs behind a laptop or a tablet or where they Indeed, you're maybe doing it like we are doing it now with one person showing the screen and other people contributing. Um, I have a first answer, but um, yes. no, I have several answers. So maybe I say first is everywhere. What do you know? it, it is everywhere. What it is everywhere, maybe I would say it is everywhere. Thank you so much. Any it other? It hurts, isn't it? A response. Uh -huh. Thank you. It's targeted. Rather than skin color, the color of skin. Excuse me, could you repeat? Broader than uh -huh. the color of skin. Uh -huh. uh, there's room for a few more answers. Mm -hmm. And actually, maybe I should say where it says it's everywhere, there was added even in myself. Uh -huh. So that is a, a, a personal reflection, which I appreciate. Um, 
So I hope we have some more contributions coming. It often leads to violence. Uh -huh. And I'll just read a few more before we go and you show how the rest of the tool works. A social technique used to provide a, deprive a person or a group of its rights. And what maybe I can reflect on here from many, yeah, a lot of experience in working with the tool, but um, uh, Chiara says it hurts. And this is actually the kind of comment that we very often get from students. It's very close to them, it hurts. And the social technique used to deprive a person of its rights or group, it's more that we often get from university students who are thinking more analytically. But like I said, there is no right or wrong. What you know at this moment, at the beginning of the very first lesson, it's all fine. So there are more answers coming, but maybe we have to move on. Um, thank you so much, Karen, and thank you everyone for your contributions. That's, uh, very interesting to to gather all these comments. Um, and as a moment, just have a look what happens with these answers. Hmm. This, this is a tag cloud. This is something um, that we would like to show you. Um, as uh, also part of the vis visible thinking uh, routines. Uh, here you have all the answers gathered of uh, students from our classroom. So imagine, as Karen mentioned, if you work individually, if you type these answers uh, on your own, on your tablet or um, laptop, then other uh, students uh, from our classroom, your peers, uh, your colleagues, are typing their answers uh, from their perspective. At this point, all of them are gathered here. And you can have a look at them uh, with your answers being um, somehow marked bold uh, so that you can distinguish them on this um, um, background of different answers of different people uh, from your classroom. Uh, and you can at this point discuss these answers because as you can see here, uh, these answers are in uh, different languages and uh, not necessarily understandable for everyone uh, in our uh, group, uh, which is uh, um, understandable. Uh, that is that way. At the same time, uh, if uh, you would be doing it uh, in, 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 in your environment, uh, in your classroom, then these answers would come from uh, different um, people uh, using the tool at this particular moment. Uh, this is a demo version, that's why uh, it looks like that, but it gives you a feeling. You can see, you can, um, you can understand how does it work. And this little uh, thing here, these two arrows, as you can see, this is very important actually, because I'm mixing these answers not putting them in any order and not mentioning anything in the middle or as first here so that I am not also influenced by the order or the visual um, uh, visual um, uh, picture of, of, of these uh, different uh, words and answers. Karen, would you like to add something here? Well, maybe just before you move on that I think that the advantage of this kind of blended learning. First you learn individually, you, you think of which words you want to share, and then they are blended together through the technique uh, in, a, in a tag cloud. It's very equalizing. It makes all the students equal. It's not like the clever student who raises the hand first or the loud student who wants to shout out an answer. Um, and I think this for, we have heard from many teachers that this has actually opened their eyes that yeah, all the students have to contribute because they can't move forward if they don't. Um, uh, yeah, it, what, what, what we hear from teachers is that they get to know their students through this kind of uh, equalizing everyone's contribution is visible in a new way. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Karen. So all the answers are indeed equal 
and uh, all the answers um, are gathered here uh, in not keeping any sort of order. So as you can see, you can also mix them yourself and make sure that you're not influenced uh, by them. Thank you, Karen. Let's go to the next step. And this is a moment, uh, I would say quite exciting moment, when we are going to meet Medina. We are going to meet Medina, one of uh, young people uh, that uh, are part of uh, Stories That Move. Um, and th this is an actually actual story that moves uh, that you're going to see in a second. Um, here we can hear what she thinks about discrimination. Uh, and uh, you also um, are asked to pay attention to what she says because this is part of uh, this assignment that you will be working with this video after watching it. You will also have a chance to um, to uh, reflect on it. As you can see, some of the words, and you could have seen it in previous steps as well, some of the words are highlighted. Can you see that? I believe that's visible. Yeah. If you press on them, you can see a very brief explanation of the term, in that case, discrimination, unequal treatment based on categories such as someone's ancestry, religion, gender, sexuality, or disability. We have another word, prejudice. And prejudice is also explained here, explained here. But to see more, you just click on this particular word and you're redirected to our glossary. Our glossary, and by our glossary, I mean a, a place on our website where all might be considered difficult terms are being explained in a very brief, in a very short uh, way. Um, as you can see here, all of these terms are um, put here in an alphabetical order and you're able to track them and you're able to uh, answer. Uh, maybe some things are not clear to you and maybe you would like to uh, check it out uh, while working with the tool. And this is also a great help for all the students and also for all the teachers who might be afraid that some of the terms might not be understandable for their students while using the tool. This was something I wanted to show to you, uh, an exciting uh, addition, sort of, um, but this is um, part of our, uh, our, our tool. It's also visible at all times on our main website. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I. It's a good moment to mention that uh, we've had lots of discussions, of course, about these uh, terms. Uh, we didn't always agree as an international team, and this also led into the tool, because the fact that you can disagree about what discrimination is, it's part of the debate in society. It's the part of the of the situation in the classroom, and that's why we with the help of technicians, made the tool very open, one where a lot is discussed. One is where we are not looking to define particularly, precisely, but to look at different options. Having said this, of course, it's really nice to, to go deeper. And I like particularly what Betty wrote today or yesterday in the forum, how uh, prejudice is a, um, well, no, actually, she started with stereotypes are uh, regarded as a cognitive component um, that often is unconscious, people are unconscious of, and how prejudice is the effective component of stereotyping, and how discrimination is one of the behavioral components. Now, she writes very eloquently about this, so Betty, if you're with us today, thank you, because it's really a very nice contribution. Um, I wanted to show, share this because it's, it, th this is what we hope will happen at the level of your students. Everyone will come with their own ideas and check them with our glossary and come with other definitions. And in this way, 
we obviously believe our glossary is 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 really quite good, uh, very well researched. But it's there. The researchers do not agree on many terms. So I just wanted to bring that forward. Maybe it's time to go to Medina though now. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Karen. Um, thank you, Karen, and thank you for your contribution on the forum, Betty. That's uh, very uh, very interesting as well. Um, well, yes, I think it's a moment to uh, share the video of Medina. So you have to take down your screen, I think, Matthias. If it's possible to play the video now. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Medina. I am from Germany, but my parents are from Albania. Um, I'm 17 years old and I was born on the 1st August. Um, I'm Muslim and what I like to do is play volley volleyball and to go shopping as many girls. Ich habe halt Es kommt jetzt mies, wenn ich sage, aber ich habe halt Vorurteile. Ich weiß nicht, beispielsweise am Stuttgarter Bahnhof, am Hauptbahnhof, wenn ich dann abends so entlang laufe, sehe ich halt überall Gothics und Punks und die sitzen da und trinken Alkohol und dann, ich weiß nicht, ich habe diese Vorurteile, ich weiß halt, ich weiß nicht ihre Background-Story, warum die da jetzt sind oder warum die obdachlos sind, aber ich habe halt immer diese Vorurteile, dass die einfach faul sind, nichts tun für ihre Zukunft und dass die einfach sozusagen ihr Leben chillen. Das, ich weiß nicht, das mag ich nicht an mir, dass ich sofort diese Vorurteile habe. Das ist einfach, vielleicht stört es mich auch, dass es so, dass es so krass ist, weil es sind nicht nur drei, drei vier Leute, ähm, die da rumsitzen und dann rumschreien, rumnörgeln, weil ähm, es sind sehr viele auf dem Stuttgarter Bahnhof. Und ja, das ist sowas, was, wo ich glaube, dass ich andere diskriminiere. Oder beziehungsweise Vorurteile habe. Aber so direkt diskriminiert, glaube ich, habe ich noch niemanden. Weil ich bin ja selbst Ausländerin und ich weiß jetzt nicht, warum ich jetzt jemanden diskriminieren soll, wegen seiner Nationalität oder aufgrund seiner Hautfarbe oder so, weil ich bin ein ziemlich offener Mensch und kann mit Diskriminierung nicht anfangen. Ich weiß jetzt nicht, ob Vorurteile eine Vorstufe von Diskriminierung sind oder bereits Diskriminierung ist. Thank you so much for sharing this, this video. I will get back to sharing my screen once again. We'll get back to the tool. So, uh, you just uh, met Medina? Uh, you just saw one of the stories uh, that are uh, part of the stories that move. Uh, you can find uh, many uh, more stories uh, of young people from all over the Europe uh, on our uh, website. Uh, I guess some of you already made this little research. And um, let's uh, go to the next step, uh, to the discrimination machine. And do you remember this picture from the very beginning of our our meeting, the machine of discrimination? Uh, it, in this part, we are asked to look at different parts of this machine and maybe also to reflect on the roles of those who are um, presented on this picture. Let's have a look. Karen, could you please read the text? Yeah, maybe I just mentioned there are three short texts coming up which are three essential elements we feel um, of discrimination. Other people, when we look at someone, we form a first opinion based on their appearance or behavior. We only think someone is different when they do not look or act how we expect. We don't invent the generalized images we have. They come from the society around us. They are expectations created and spread by other people and the media through language and institutions. So how we see others is influenced by many different factors. That's actually the core. 
Maybe we go to the next path, discrimination. Grouping and judging. When we decide that someone seems different, we consciously or unconsciously group them. The groupings often go hand in hand with the value judgment. Sometimes we also attribute particular characteristics to that other group. When we interact with people that we have grouped in a negative way, it can lead to discrimination. The discrimination machine does not run automatically. We can all rethink how we group and judge people. So before we move on, I think what um, we discovered in long discussions with our team is that the first is this mechanism of grouping people. Of, or no, the first is the mechanism of seeing Think. the other, yeah. us and the others. And the next is that we group them. We all do this. Let's, you know, we all group people. Some, I guess we also all judge, but some more than others. So grouping and judging. And then the third aspect that we really feel is essential for understanding discrimination is that it has an effect. It's not a neutral thing. People who are discriminated against are harmed by it. Discrimination on an individual level can take the form of insults or physical violence. Discrimination can also be structural. For example, when a group has restricted access to education or housing. Maybe uh, I quickly reflect on that these texts are at the same time very simple, short, and at the same time quite complex. So depending on the level of your students, we found that teachers sometimes look at the three main, the title, as it were, the others, grouping, valuing, the effects, or they go into the text and they discuss it with their students. It depends on the level of your students. Some students will have no problem whatsoever and might even find it too simple or too superficial. But this is a yeah, these are, we feel, very important core elements that need to be looked at. Indeed, thank you, Karen. And uh, as, as, as you just mentioned, uh, we consider these as these three core elements for as a sort of starting point to discussion with students regarding discrimination. And this is also a moment when you are asked to uh, reflect on Medine's story, so on what she experienced, on what she um, um, uh, talks about, based on the visual uh, visuals that are uh, prepared here. So part of the bigger picture of the machine of discrimination, as you see, I referred to that earlier, um, to different parts of this machine. Here you're asked to say, what does Medine see at the station? If you want to go back to her story, there is always this one place here on the right side with an e, uh, e icon information uh, where you can read her story uh, again. It's a transcript of what she's saying in this video. Um, I'm afraid we don't have time to go in detail through different questions um, regarding uh, Medin's, um, uh, Medin's story, um, but uh, at this point I would like to encourage you all to go back to this point and uh, based on what you've seen um, to um, to check uh, different uh, questions that are being prepared here and uh, try to answer them also based on the script that is available here. Uh, but I would like to show you also uh, different parts within this particular learning path. As you can see on the left side, you have a menu from which you can skip certain parts or go to different parts so that uh, you have a look uh, into it. What I wanted to show you is um, what I wanted to show you is that there are more stories of young people here in this particular learning path and through the tool you will enc encounter a lot of young people sharing their experience, sharing their stories. Here at this point you are introduced to stories of five people and then later on uh, 
in this format you want you can get to know more about different people being presented in the tool as you can see. Um, Matthias, I add here that one of the elements of uh, stories that move is that we want the learner to have a choice Absolutely. and here we have five stories and without um, so here you don't see the background, but they have seen a video. They have already met Nick, they've met Tyro, they've met Anna, and they get to say, which person do I want to look at more carefully? Whose stories do I want to focus on? Um, all stories count. Every story is important. But we should also allow for different interests. Um, so this is a recurring element, I think, in especially because it's a sensitive topic. I don't think we should say to someone who's not ready to go deeply into a particular story that they have to. Let them choose. Who do you want to know more about? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Karen. This is all about your individual choices, about having a choice and also what has been mentioned before, no right or wrong answers and all answers are equal if they pop up uh, on a big screen, uh, for instance, in a um, in a matter of uh, tech cloud that you've already uh, seen. And something very interesting for the very end of our uh, um, part with the um, with the tool is a question. You see, what do you know now? So this is something we mentioned already at the very beginning. Um, so what do you know now regarding um, um, discrimination? It's once again a question uh, regarding what uh, is discrimination? What do you know now? You are once again facing the answers from the very beginning of um, uh, going through this particular learning path. I'm stop, uh, I, I will stop sharing my screen now. Um, Maybe I think it's interesting now to, because you, you, you didn't show that in this learning path, you, you first have the question, what do you know about discrimination? And then at the end, the question is, what do you know now? And then you see a new collection of words. So young people who might first have said, um, it's everywhere, might now say it shouldn't be everywhere. Whatever they reflect, they reflect. But now we can do our own little reflection. Oh, this has been quite a short uh, event, but if exactly. I ask you again to to share, um, Matthäus, the exactly. Slido, mm -hmm. I'm going to see whether being immersed for just a short period in the tool and the mm -hmm. things we've showed you, whether you have some new thoughts to share. So, if you go back to the link, which, are, which is in the um, chat, what would you like to add? Um, let's say 40 minutes after we started, what would you like to add now? Have you any new thoughts in relation to your um, expectations of discussing discrimination in the classroom? takes a little time to think about it, whether... Once again, we have necessary. Mm -hmm. While people are still thinking, I will add that you can also, if you have questions for Mateus or me, also put those in the um, Q&A. In the, the Q&A. We can um, take some time after we've rounded this off to, to look in detail at any questions that you have. Whoever has prejudices, it is important to make them aware. Thank you for this. 
absolutely crucial, exciting. Oh yeah, we have exciting. A long-term process, an extensive topic for discussing. Should not be discussed in a classroom only, but in the staff room as well. Very interesting comments, and I think very uh, important to mention. Maybe that uh, some of the students who work with stories that move uh, were very much um, uh, inspired by it and also uh, shared this tool with their teachers and uh, with their um, parents so that they also uh, could uh, reflect on this uh, topic. I think it's important to mention that some of these stories you can check on our website. Um, so I would like to encourage you to uh, look at the main website of the project uh, more. Maybe this is a good moment to also address this. Um, the question that was the comment that was at the beginning of the, in, in the slider was that it can be, I forget the exact wording, but it can be very challenging. A lot of people say challenging. And I think I, I gave the example from one of our participants of certain sentiments in the classroom. It could, in this case, anti-gay, anti-Jewish, but it can be race, racist, it can be anti-Muslim. We know it's out there in Europe, it's out there in our classrooms. What we find is that often teachers will start with a story. For example, Maciej is a Slovak young guy who has muscular dystrophy and uh, has to move in a wheelchair. He's, he has um, physical disability, but he speaks so much at ease with himself about how he is confronted with prejudice and discrimination that it's empowering to listen to him. And it, it's a little way for most um, situation, for most classrooms, it's a way from a too negative initial response. So it can sensitize students. And that's why we feel all stories count. We, we should listen to any story that the classroom um, brings forward. Um, yeah. Let's, I'm going to ask whether there's any questions that we should address before we mm -hmm. start rounding off because it's getting close to six. Maybe to, to finish with the Slido, I will read two more uh, comments that uh, mm -hmm. up here. Whoever has prejudices, it is important to make them aware and uh, also helps the pupils and the teacher to think about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I very much like full of opportunities for deeper learning. Uh, thank you so much for all your contributions. I'm I'm going to stop sharing my screen at that uh, moment. Mm -hmm. Karen. Yeah, I wanted to um, especially see whether there's any particular comments in the uh, Q&A, things that we haven't addressed. And uh, while I kind of see whether anything is coming in, I will say that what I'm most looking forward to myself, and that's based on experience, is you sharing your thoughts in the forum where we have very direct questions, but also on Facebook. Um, I'm not sure that all of you are on Facebook, but those of you who are, please do join us and feel free to share your thoughts, your opinions, specific experiences you have because this is um, this is invaluable for us as an international group of educators who obviously feel this is an important topic but it's also a model for our students if we among ourselves can share difficulties we are facing possible solutions that we are unsure of or that we have tried out but that have worked then we can share this with our students as well. I think a big message from stories that move from the international team is we don't have the answer. If, we, if it was easy, if it was just a matter of having laws and keeping laws, it wouldn't be such a difficult 
theme in our societies, this recurring uh, element of discrimination. Hopefully, however, both you and students will be inspired by the stories both of young people now and from the past, which is something we will go into, um, I think, Yes, in the third module, which will open on Friday, looking also on what we can learn from the past. Um, we will see that there is continuity, sadly, but there is also change. There are also many inspiring examples. So, let me see. Um, I see Chiara, thank you. Uh, it's good to meet you online as well and to read your contributions. Um, and the face group, group group has been shared on the uh, platform, um, but there are no questions at this moment. So maybe I think now is it good to say that we know you have a very busy time, both in your daily life as teachers, but also doing the course. Uh, we hope we will have lots of exchange with you um, and yeah I really wish you well uh, in the next two weeks um, working with these themes and um, yeah we hope to see you back and to uh, engage with you in many different ways. Oh having said that I do actually see I do have a, a question which is very interesting. Um, how do you deal with the taboo of time. It's not someone put it differently in 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 the slido, but it's something you you need to take time for. Um, and I think the personal prejudices in the classroom is something which will only be addressed if you if feel safe to think about the prejudices they have. So if I tell all my students you're prejudiced, you think negatively about this group or that group, you're, you're ending the discussion. But if you ask them to share um, examples that they have heard, um, that they disagree with, even possibly share, it, it's delicate because we don't want people to share prejudices and then get the feeling it's okay. I think it's always important as an educator to stress that maybe a prejudice is not discrimination, but it is still painful for the people who are targeted by it. But the taboo is something I think we should do. We should break through. Um, and I don't know whether you have a reflection on this, Matthias, but one, one thing I've noticed is, is actually quite uh, um, useful is to take your own personal example. So if you, for example, say, well, actually for myself, I could say that until I became friends with some people with an um, Asian family background, who are themselves um, immersed in Asian culture, I didn't realize that I had prejudices. That I've, It was only through my friendships with uh, people living in my country with an Asian background that I realized, oh, hmm, I guess this is a prejudice that I have. If you say this to your students, taking whatever example is relevant to yourself, maybe it will make them feel that it's good to reflect and yeah, that's that would be my response. Anything to add, Matthias? No, thank you for that, Karen. I think that this is a yeah, this is a good good answer to this question. And indeed, by 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 sharing a personal example, I think you can really explain certain things um, better and easier, and it can really help you with uh, facilitating this discussion further. So um, I would definitely also um, go to this direction. Yeah. Are there any other questions on our chat? I see. Thank you from Teresa. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Chiara.
If there are no more questions here, as Karen already mentioned, and this is also visible on the chat, uh, we encourage you to join our Facebook group and also to uh, discuss uh, using the forum. Uh, we are there every day. I'm not going to say all the time, but every day. <laughs> and we are really happy to get uh, into interactions with you and um, perhaps maybe also have some online discussions. Um, yeah, thank you so much for um, for um, being here with us, uh, joining the webinar, but not only choosing this course and, uh, and, and going for different parts of the course. There is much more to come in the next uh, coming days. Um, and we are looking forward to uh, seeing also your um, lesson plans in the end. Maybe actually, I just realized that I didn't mention. Um, I'm not sure if some of you or most of you are also eTwinning members. But one thing that we've noticed with this online tool is that it's being used and it's being promoted by school exchange programs. Um, Piotr, uh, Mateusz is um, engaged with the Polish-German Youth Exchange program. Uh, we've been working quite a bit with e-twinning and more and more we're noticing that this is a, um, a topic that is relevant in school exchange because if you want to know, get to know each other across Europe, then this is something that engages young people a lot. So we will be working on um, developing special ways using also TwinSpace um, to make it easy and attractive and relevant within e-twinning um, programs. So any of you who are uh, interested to look into that more, let us know. You, you, you will find everywhere our email address, info at stories that move .org. It's uh, easy to find, but you can also contribute this on Facebook or elsewhere. Um, yeah, I think that was something that came to mind. Yes, yeah, thank you, Karen. And indeed, and if you have any experience or if you're planning maybe also to do an exchange and you think that discussing these issues prior to the mobility, so before going um, abroad or online and meeting um, uh, students uh, from um, different uh, countries or perhaps during the actual uh, exchange, um, you see that there is a space for this sort of um, uh, activities uh, using stories that move. Um, please contact us. Uh, we are gathering also sorts of uh, also information and experiences of teachers uh, from different countries uh, using our tool or discussing these issues and looking for an online tools that can be useful in preparing um, um, activities um, about these uh, particular uh, matters. So uh, please uh, do not hesitate to contact us. And from my side, once again, I'm very much uh, looking forward for the rest of the course. Thank you for joining and uh, have a nice evening. Yeah. Um, Alexandra, are you taking over now at this moment? Thank you both for your wonderful contribution. It was a really interesting and valuable uh, webinar. I hope our participants enjoyed it a lot as we did. Uh, thank you very much everyone for attending this webinar and see you to the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye everyone.